I call this the the area. <laughs> So uh, I bring that up because uh, we're going to be doing some projects with uh, my Aria, which are also relevant to the XS, which we're going to be talking about today. Um, I guess I should give a disclaimer, right? Opus Audio Source sent this out. Hyphen has nothing to do with this review. As always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. So I uh, really hesitate to call things the best very often because um, I think it's an overused term, but I truly do think that this might just be the best headphone at $500 right now. Uh, this is genuinely a look into the high-end world of planars, and if you want to sort of experience the high-end realm, I think this is a decent way of getting pretty close. It definitely has its limitations, but it's got some major upsides as well. And in some cases, it even competes with things like the area. I think the most controversial thing is going to be the build. Um, their use of the Diva headband, I think, is going to um, possibly have a lot of detractors, including myself, up until I tried it. I personally didn't find the Diva to be that comfortable, but for whatever reason, the combination of the pads shape and style of this paired with this headband is actually not that bad for my particular head. I think this is gonna be one of those things that is a little bit more controversial than most other headphones for comfort, but for me, this is actually pretty comfortable. I much prefer this over the Ananda, I prefer this over the Diva, and I prefer this over the Sundara, though I will say that the Aria is more comfortable. Now, of course, inside of this, they are featuring their stealth magnets. Now, I'm starting to notice that the trend I kind of thought was true is definitely true with how the stealth magnets affect sound staging specifically. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, but this has the same effect that the Stealth Aria did. Uh, it also had the same effect as HE-1000 SE um, and some of the other Stealth Magnet options that we've looked at. So for size and fitment, I'm usually somewhere about half, but this is actually a pretty big headphone, so I'm on the lower end of the headphone extension. If you've got a really small head, I don't know if this would fit you. And I think the curvature of this has to match your head pretty well for it to be comfortable. And, and I think that a combination of the ear cups and this headband just happened to work with my head uh, for whatever reason, because it is pretty comfortable. Okay, so let's talk about the overall sound. Um, overall sound is very good and very reminiscent of the high end. Uh, every sound on this headphone sounds very fast and very clean, um, but also avoids some of the pitfalls of higher end headphones from Heifman especially in terms of tonality and upper end timbre characteristics. This actually fixes a lot of the issues. Also, if you're gonna be comparing this against something like a Sundara, one, this is definitely better than the Sundara in multiple ways, and we'll talk about that, but it is also bassier than the Sundara. Now, the Sundara's bass is never bad, but it was a component that I feel like a lot of people wanted a little bit more from, and you can get more with this. So let's break down the treble response. I think that this is a more even treble performance than that Sundara because it's actually a little bit less forward. It is a little bit darker than the Sundara, uh, but it also has a less um, chintzy sound than the Sundara. The Sundara, while very, very, very good for the money, and this does not make the Sundara irre irrelevant at all because they're at two very different price tags. I do think that it has a more refined treble performance than the Sundara, even though the Sundara is a little bit more forward. Now, I do think that there are benefits and drawbacks to both sides here compared to the Sundara. The Sundara tends to finish off notes in a really finite way, especially if you listen to acoustics like guitars, that headphone has just a really good top end finish to a lot of the notes and it sounds very refined, but it does sound a little bit bright from time to time, depending on the song. This tends to avoid a little bit more of that. It leans a little bit warmer on the tonality, but it's not too dark. I actually prefer the treble performance of this over something like an LCD-2C, which is even more expensive than this is. Though when it comes to mid-range, I do prefer the 2C over this, but for treble performance, I think that this is a little bit better. Another area that I think this headphone is better in is timbre. Um, even better than some higher-end hyphens like the Aria, uh, the Aria in the top end sounds plasticky sometimes. Metallics literally sound like plastic. Um, 
And uh, that's the, one of the pitfalls of that headphone. It's a very good headphone in some other ways, but timbre on the upper end is not one of them. This avoids that. Um, it is not perfect timbre compared to what is out there. And I think that um, Sennheiser, like in HC 660S, gives this thing a run for its money. DT 1990 gives this thing a run for its money. But it's still competing at minimum with its price category in that area while beating some of its uh, own family members uh, in the higher end realm for timbre characteristics. Now let's talk about mid-range. Um, while this is not the best mid-ranging headphone for $500, it is very good. And again, you see it beat some of its competitors like the Sundara and like the Aria. So how does it beat the Sundara? Well, it just sounds a little bit more complete and larger scale. I think this is a physical driver property. I've noticed that headphones with larger drivers have a bigger or taller scale to the sound, and they just seem more massive in terms of size and less of small specific points of imaging. And I feel like the Sundara suffers a little bit from those small specific points of imaging, whereas this feels a little bit more closer to real life scale. Not real life scale, but it, it gets a little bit more in that direction. I also think this is a little bit better than the Aria in the mid-range because of how it handles the upper mid-range. This headphone is a little shouty. That is one of the, the downsides to that headphone. Um, and this avoids that shoutiness in the upper mid range a lot. So it makes a lot of female vocalists way more tolerable and actually quite enjoyable. And they feel correct on this headphone where they feel incorrect on that one. Now, since it's Hyphenman, you're still gonna be getting a cleaner version of a vocal performance. They are not a super lower, uh, mid-range focused headphone uh, that's typically in Odyssey's wheelhouse and not so much in Hyphenman's wheelhouse. So lower mid-range I think could be a little bit stronger on this and I wouldn't be complaining. Uh, but as far as the full vocal range, it is quite excellent. Um, it actually makes a couple of artists like Tones and I, Adele and LP straight up enjoyable on this headphone, whereas I would actually avoid those artists on the Aria. I think for total mid-range quality, I think the HD 660S might edge this out, but I would take this over the DT 1990 for its mid-range performance. And again, like I said, it competes pretty well with its brothers and sisters. Okay, bass. Um, bass is an interesting one because it does beat the Sundara. It is bassier than the Sundara, but it actually does lack a few high-end features that uh, would make it more competitive with the high-end. I actually really think this is a property of the Stealth Magnets because I noticed the same reduction in bass quality when I reviewed the Aria Stealth, which I'm not gonna be comparing against. Um, it hits more solid, but it is less transient. Um, it's less see-through and it has um, less opacity than the full-on Aria did. Now we are comparing that to a headphone that's three times the cost, um, but I think the base performance of this, while doesn't really extend far beyond its price point, is very, very competitive. It's definitely super clean and it leans more towards cleanliness and quality than it does quantity. It's not a super crazy bass headphone, so I wouldn't get this expecting it. But I do think that this plays really well with the rest of the regions of sound, and it just provides a super even experience. Everything feels well measured and balanced, and I find this just a highly, highly enjoyable headphone. Um, and for the money, it's extremely impressive. So imaging and soundstage. Imaging is very good. Um, I almost wanna stop talking about imaging altogether because it's typically very good with headphones these days, um, anything, decent is typically very good. Uh, but sound staging is one of those things that does get affected by the stealth magnets. Every version of a headphone that have tried the non-stealth and the stealth, the stealth is, it's just closed in. It's just a little bit closer to you. Um, that can be a benefit for things like vocals, but it's a little bit of a detriment for wide ranging far out sounds in the sound stage. And so even something like a Sundara is, I think a little bit wider than this, but the Sundara, like I said before, does lack scale. So one thing that the XS has is because of its driver size, it's a physically tall sounding headphone. So when you hear something, it actually physically sounds big and it doesn't sound like this small little point of imaging it feels like more of like a, a line of imaging almost. It's quite good for that, but the outer boundaries do get beat by, I think things like the DT1990. Um, but I do think that it's a little bit more competitive with something like an HC660S, which is not a super wide sound staging headphone either. So while this is already, I think the best $500 headphone, if they widen the sound stage on this, I think that this would have pretty steep competition. It might even be the best headphone for $1,000. 
it's really quite good. So competition, is it worth it over the Sundara? Um, I would say just for the, the comfort and uh, the sound improvements alone, it's probably worth the extra 150 bucks. But if your budget is 350, the Sundara is still probably the best planar at that price. Uh, so I wouldn't hesitate to buy either, just depending on your budget. If you can afford the extra one, I would definitely get this one though. DT1990 is one of my favorite headphones, but I think that's definitely a better studio headphone and not so much a hi-fi headphone. This is more focused on enjoyment of sound, whereas that is focused on technicality of sound. And then HC660S, I think is better for vocals, but I would choose this for most of the other regions of the sound signature, though HC660S is a hair more comfortable. Now, the big question, does this replace the Aria? No, um, there are still some advantages that the Aria really has, especially sound staging and position of all sounds all together. Now the Aria has a few technical faults, upper mid range being one of them, uh, slightly plasticky highs, but every other region of sound I think is better on the Aria. Now granted, there's a massive price differential between the two, so it's not exactly a fair apples to apples comparison. So I think Hyperman is definitely doing a good job of keeping each price range, not cannibalizing the other, uh, but as far as $500 goes, this might be about as far as you can reach right now in the world of hi-fi headphones. So while I typically do not advise people to purchase something, I just typically say whether or not I like it, I would highly advise you to purchase this. This is a very, very good headphone for the cost. Thanks a lot for watching. Until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off. Peace.